Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about VPNs, that's virtual private networks. I'll start off with site-to-site -site VPNs, and then after this, we'll get on to client-to-site remote access VPNs. So with a site-to-site -site VPN, you can see in my example here, I've got an office in New York, and I've got an office in Boston. When hosts in New York communicate with each other, that traffic will be unencrypted. And when hosts in Boston communicate with each other, in our example, that's unencrypted as well. But when hosts in New York and Boston communicate with each other across the untrusted network of the internet, that traffic is going to go through our VPN tunnel and it's going to be encrypted. So anybody on the internet that's able to sniff that traffic, they'll be able to see it, but they won't be able to read it because it's encrypted traffic. So your site-to-site -site VPNs use symmetric encryption algorithms such as DES, triple DES, and AES, more likely to be AES nowadays, to send encrypted traffic between locations over an untrusted network such as the internet. Traffic inside an office is often left unencrypted as inside the office is often seen as a trusted network. However, VPN tunnels can also be deployed internally and Cisco TrustSec is another more manageable solution for internal authentication and encryption. But it's not covered in the CCNA exam. Site-to-site -site VPN tunnels typically terminate on a firewall or a router on both sides. And a pre-shared key can be configured on both sides of the tunnel or certificates can be used. And certificates offer a more scalable solution because each of your different tunnels should have a different key. You don't want to reuse the same key again, because if one tunnel gets compromised, if you were using the same key everywhere, then that means that all of your tunnels are compromised. So certificates can give you a more scalable solution to manage this, but to be honest, in real world deployments, pre-shared keys are very commonly used. It's just easier to set them up. IPsec is a framework of open standards that provides secure encrypted communication on an IP network. And it's IPsec that we're going to use for our site-to-site -site VPN tunnels. Inside IPsec Internet Key Exchange, hand, that's Ike, handles negotiation of protocols and algorithms and generates the encryption and authentication keys. And ISACAMP, that's the Internet Security Association and Key Management Protocol, defines the procedures for authenticating and communicating peer creation and management of security associations. ISACAMP typically uses Ike for the key exchange. So Ike and ISACAMP, you'll often, you'll often find those terms being used interchangeably. So even though there is a slight difference there, you'll often see them being used as synonyms of each other. Authentication header, AH, provides integrity, authentication, and protection from replay attacks. And ESP, the encapsulating security payload, provides confidentiality, integrity, authentication, and protection from replay attacks. So when you're implementing IPsec, you've got the option of doing it either with AH or with ESP. You've maybe noticed there that there's a big one missing for AH, which is confidentiality. When you are using a VPN tunnel, pretty much always you're going to want the actual data to be encrypted, so you've got the confidentiality. So ESP is a lot more commonly used than AH is. And as well as the choice between AH and ESP, you can also use either tunnel mode or transport mode. Tunnel mode protects the internal routing information by encrypting the IP header of the original packet. The original packet is encapsulated by another set of IP headers. And ESP tunnel mode is widely implemented in site-to-site -site VPN scenarios. The other option is transport mode. So you use one or the other. 
Transport mode encrypts only the payload and the ESP trailer, so the IP header of the original packet is not encrypted. And the IPsec transport mode is implemented for client-to-site remote access VPN scenarios. The transport mode is usually used when another tunneling protocol, such as GRE or LTUTP, is used to first encapsulate the IP data packet, then IPsec is used to protect the GRE L2TP tunnel packets. So GRE and L2TP, those are other methods you can use to create a tunnel. GRE and L2TP are not encrypted. So if you are using them and then you want to secure them, then you can use ESP transport mode around that. Now, the thing with whether you're going to use AH or ESP and whether you are going to use tunnel mode or transport mode, Really, you're always going to be using ESP, not AH. And whether you're going to use the tunnel mode or the transport mode, well, you don't really need to think about that either because when you're configuring the tunnel, depending on the application you're actually using it for and where you're setting it up, almost always this is going to be done for you as well. So you don't need to think about making a decision. It's going to be a default based on how you're setting up the tunnel anyway. Okay, so let's have a look at how we are going to do our IPsec VPN implementation if we're terminating the tunnel on a Cisco router. The first thing to configure is the interesting traffic. That is the IP subnets on both sides of the link that you want to encrypt traffic between. So I'll just have a look at my next slide here for a second. So in the example topology here, we've got the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 network on the left, the 10.10.20.0 slash 24 network on the right. Our interesting traffic would be traffic that is going between those two subnets. It's the interesting traffic that is going to be encrypted and sent through the tunnel. You use an access control list to specify the interesting traffic. Other things to configure is Isacamp or Ike phase one. As I mentioned earlier, the terms Isacamp and Ike are often used interchangeably. So you could call this Isacamp phase one or you could call it Ike phase one. In phase one, the VPN devices, that's the two routers, negotiate an Ike security policy, authenticate each other and establish a secure channel. So in phase one, that's about the initial authentication and the initial setup of the tunnel. Then in phase two, the VPN devices negotiate an IPsec security policy to protect the IPsec data. So phase one is the two devices authenticating each other. With phase two, that's where the two devices are ne gonna negotiate on the settings and algorithms that are gonna be used for the encryption of the actual data that is being sent over the tunnel. And finally, you're gonna have the data transfer. The VPN devices will apply security services to the traffic encrypt it and send it over the tunnel. So I'm gonna have a look at an example configuration here. Now you don't need to know the configuration for the CCNA exam, but I'm gonna include it here because I always find it easier to see what is going on to understand something when I can see how it's actually configured. So in our example, we've got the two offices, the 10.10.10 .10 network on the left, the 10.10.20 network on the right. And the outside interface on the router on the left that's connected to the internet has got IP address 203.0.113.1 slash 30. And on the router on the right, it's connected to the internet with public IP 203.0.113.5 slash 30. Now those are slash 30s. So with the slash 30, the subnet on the left, it's gonna have the valid host addresses 203.0.113.1 and dot two. On the right, the valid host addresses will be dot five and dot six. So you can see that those are actually two different IP subnets there. So they're on different sides of the internet. Those two routers are not directly connected to each other. They're both connected to the internet and they can reach each other on each other's public IP addresses over the internet cloud. Because the traffic is going over the internet, it's an untrusted network. When we send traffic between our two different offices, we want it to be encrypted. So we're gonna send it over our IPsec VPN tunnel. So let's have a look at the configuration. So first off, we configure phase one. The commands here now, I'll show you the configuration for R1, 
the configuration for R2, which is on the right hand side, it's going to be exactly the same. It's going to be a mirror image of this. So on the router on the left, R1, we say a global config, crypto Isaac Amp policy one to set up our first Isaac Amp policy. And then the encryption here, we're using AES. We could have also used triple DES, for example, but AES is more secure. The hash, we're using SHA. We could have also used MD5, but SHA is more secure, so we're using that. Then we're saying authentication pre-share, meaning we're going to configure the same pre-shared key, so the same password on both sites. Our other option here would have been to use certificates. Then we say group two, that is the Diffie-Hellman group that is being used for this initial setup. The lifetime, 86400, that's actually the default, which is one day. So with your VPN tunnels, they are going to be rekeyed regularly because somebody could be trying to reverse engineer, trying to hack into this. So what you want to do is make sure the, the keys are changed regularly. So the actual shared secret that you see are flat box, which is on the next line, that never changes, but that is just used for the initial setup. During the initial setup, a key will be chosen then, a shared key, which will be available on both sides. That shared key that's actually used for the encryption is going to be getting changed regularly. And then the last line here, we've got crypto Isacamp key, we've used flat box, that's the key or the password here, and address 203.0.113.5, that's the public IP address of the router on the other side. So the router on the other side, the configuration there is going to be exactly the same, apart from the address is going to be pointing at our address. And the password needs to be the same on both sides. Then we're going to configure our ACL to define the interesting traffic. Here we're on the router on the left. So the interesting traffic is going to be traffic going from the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 network behind us going to the 10.10.20.0 network over on the other side. So we've said IP access list extended, flatbox VPN ACL, permit IP 10.10.10.0, 0.0.0.255, going to 10.10.20.0, 0.0.0.255. So that's an ACL saying whenever traffic is coming from 10.10.10 on our side, going to 10.10.20 on the other side, we're going to configure this, that this is going to be going through the VPN tunnel and get encrypted. Then we configure phase two, which is for the actual encryption of the actual data that is being sent over. Our config for that, we say crypto IPsec transform set, and then here I've called it flatbox TS for transform set, and I've said ESP AES, ESP SHA HMAC. So this is the encryption algorithms that are going to be acceptable here. We want to have that the same on the other side because both sides are going to negotiate what is acceptable. Now, notice if I go back to phase one, I also specified the encryption and the hash there as well. This is for the initial authentication of the routers, the initial setup of the tunnel. I need to specify the algorithms I'm using again for phase two as well. This is going to be used for the actual transport of the actual data between the clients. Then I have crypto map. I've called it flatbox CM for the crypto map 10 IPsec Isacamp and then set peer 203.113.5. That's the public IP address of the router on the other side. Set transform set flatbox TS. That references the transform set that I configured up at the top here. And then match address flatbox VPN ACL. That matches the access control list that I configured on the previous slide. And then I need to apply it to my outside interface. So I've said interface serial 010, crypto map, flat, crypto map, flat box CM. So that is the full config to set up the VPN tunnel. I still have one other thing to do though. You probably noticed that I was using private IP addresses on both sides there. So those addresses are going to need to be natted whenever we're talking to the internet. So if any of my hosts on the inside in either site are communicating with an external public web server, their private IP address needs to be natted. But when traffic is going through the VPN tunnel, it needs to be not natted. So I need to disable natting traffic between those two subnets in my ACL that is being used for NAT. 
So here I've got IP access list extended flat box NAT ACL. So this is a different ACL than the one I was using to specify the traffic going through the tunnel. This is my ACL that I'm using for NAT. If you want a reminder of how to set up NAT, go back and have a look at the NAT section again. So I'm altering my normal NAT ACL here and I've said deny IP from 10.10.10 .10 .10 .10 going to 10.10.20. So that just stops the traffic going over the VPN tunnel from being natted. And then I've got permit IP 10.10.10.0.0.0.255 NA. So any traffic going anywhere else, meaning going out to public internet servers is going to be natted. Okay, so that is our site to site VPN tunnels and how to configure them. In the next lecture, we'll have a look at client to site remote access VPN. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.